Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is the second video uh, on uh, building a simple spark carousel. And so last time we looked at the carousel itself, talked about how it was constructed, and talked about the wheel layout, and fixed that. Now this time we're actually going to talk about building these individual thumbnails. Now there's two types of classes that you're going to need to build these. One is going to be an embed class, where you embed the image, and the other is where you actually bring it in dynamically. So I actually have two cases. Let's go to the uh, description, and then we'll go right to the code. So today we're actually going to look at using the wizard to create a class, a uh, paper vision style, using the embed class and actually importing the uh, files dynamically. Instantiated, we're going to talk about S layout and a little bit about scaling and constraints. So let's get to it real quick. A lot to do here and hopefully we'll get through it all. So we're in the code and you can see in the package there's actually two uh, files. In the first file actually what I do is actually use the embed class. And we've talked about the embed class before. Basically what I'm doing, I'm embedding my image and I'm bringing it right into my thumbnail. So that requires I import a class into that thumbnail. Now in the second application, what I'm doing is I'm actually bringing my images in dynamically. Isn't that cool? So you don't have to always use the embed class with the bitmap image. You can actually bring things in dynamically and that's what I do in the second application. Now both of these are built on simple thumbnail classes and I'm going to show those classes to you right now. So if you scroll down here in the package explorer and you click on org and you click on lively 3D and you go to thumbs, you see there's two classes right here. Now classes are actually very easy to create in Flash Builder. Just right click on one of the thumbnails and go to new and go to uh, action script class. And when you do that you can actually put in a name We'll call it my class. And we typically classes are capitalized. And then you can come along here and give it a super class, which means it will extend or inherit those properties. In this case, I want the group. Because the bitmap image itself does not have interactivity, so I need to add the group because that does. And so I'll start browsing here. And that'll give me some code hinting, and I'll start typing in group, and there it is right here. Click on that, hit OK. And now I've extended it with the group, and I'm going to hit I already gave it that name. We'll call it class two. I hit finish, and there's my class automatically generated in uh, Flash Builder for me. And that's the stub code, and I want to start filling that out. And at this point, let me go ahead and bring up one of my classes and tell you how classes are constructed. Now, a class actually has six parts. Its first part is actually its package statement, and that's where it lives. And then the next part are actually the import statements, and you actually need these to make your class run. Uh, in this case, we needed a bitmap image, and we needed a group. In the next uh, statement, or the third part, you actually have the class statement itself, which has the class name, and it extends whatever you're going to, in a sense, use as a superclass or properties that you want to inherit from another class. In this case, it's the group. Uh, the fourth part is actually your properties, and these are just like variables. The fifth part, most important, uh, is your uh, constructor class. And so whenever your class is instantiated, this class or portion runs and notice there's no uh, decoration type here so you don't see void or return or string so the uh, constructor class does not have a decoration and whatever you want to run for that class you want to actually stick inside that constructor and following that finally the sixth part of the class is all the methods that you want to create so you can have tons and tons of method inside a class and those are basically things that do things like functions and that's exactly what they are and when you put a function inside of a class you call it a method and that is the anatomy of a class. Now in this particular uh, class we're actually importing the embed class and then we're sticking that in our bitmap in our constructor and we're calling this method here build my bitmap and all it's doing basically is taking that class your embed class and using it as a source of your bitmap. So in your next class you're actually not using um, a class as the source of your bitmap but you're using a string because you're going to bring everything in dynamically it's not embedded and so use that as a string and that's in your method and when you run your method and it actually uses that string as the source of your bitmap image and so now let's go to the code and show you how we instantiate these classes so let's go back and run the application and just explain to you what I'm doing in the application itself what I'm doing is I'm actually bringing in these thumbnails which are these two classes I created and you can embed it or bring it as a, a dynamic source and I'm turning them into a particle system. So each one of these is kind of like a particle. And then we'll bring that into my S layout, and that's going to organize these particles into a carousel. So the first thing I want to do is instantiate the class and throw it into a particle system, and then let S layout organize its design. So let's take a look and see how we do that in the code. So let me point out how this is done very quickly in the code. 
Uh, the first thing you want to do, of course, is make sure that you bring all your import statements in. And specifically, you want to bring in that uh, embed class. And that's going to have all your images that are embedded. Now, in the next uh, example, we'll actually see where those aren't embedded. I'm going to declare that as a property, so I actually bring those in. And so if you use a control click uh, trick, you can actually control click on that. And there's all those uh, images that have been embedded. That class has already been talked about, and you just go back to the Frame Ripper video, and I discuss that in detail. Let's go back. And that's what's going to actually go into your declared bitmap group. Now, here's my bitmap group right here. And so what I'm actually doing in this method, after the application is created, I declare uh, the bitmap group 16 times. I, I instantiate it 16 times, and each time I put a different embedded image in it. And that creates my particles. I then uh, shove all these into a particle array and attach listeners to those. When I roll over those, I'll have some interactivity, and we'll talk about that next time. So now let's look at the second application. And in this application, we're actually going to bring in 16 particles as before, but not embed the uh, images, but bring those in dynamically. So at your creation complete, you run this method right here, and you create 16 particles. Now in this case, it's actually ticking between 1 and 17, and it's calling the actual images from your assets folder. Now the images are numbered chapter 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, through 17, so there's a little parsing string that I created here just to be able to bring in just to be able to bring in the images correctly now once you get the images in the string what you do next is you actually just stick those right into your class so if you consider the bitmap class we created previously it just grabs that image string and uses it as the source of your bitmap that's all stuck into a carousel group and then stuck into a particle array and those particles are organized by your layout. Let's go down to the carousel group. And now if you take a look at your carousel group, you see your lively layout is here. So as opposed to paper vision, where you would actually go in there and you organize things in terms of coding, this is all done inside the layout group, like automatically sizing, positioning. It's just fantastic. So let's use our control uh, click uh, trick. So let's roll over, control click. And now the code that you're interested in is in the update uh, method. So let's go to that real quick. And uh, I think it's update display list is what you're looking for. And there you are, an update display list. And in the update display list method, there actually is all the control logic that you need, in a sense, to create the carousel layout. So if you're going to create a different layout, then you'd want a different type of control logic. And so we'll go into that in future uh, videos. And actually, I'm going to be building a book site next. And so I'll show you how to do that step by step. And we'll go into more detail and layouts. So let's go back and take a look at the application one more time. So here it is and what I do basically is I uh, instantiate 16 particles and I throw that in my S layout and it's organized for me automatically. Now I just have one more quick statement to make and that is how I did my particular class. I make a statement here paper vision style. And what I mean by that is I've actually created a public property. So let's go back to the class. So if we go back to my thumbnail class We'll notice that my property is public. That gives me ability to actually grab it. Now that's the way Paper Vision does it when it creates its primitive. So I did the same thing. A lot of people don't like to make these properties public. They like to make them private using getters and setters and having your methods be public. So I used a Paper Vision method and it worked. But you got to also keep security in mind when you create applications. And sometimes in some applications, making your uh, properties public is a no-no. That's the end of this video, and I'll see you next time.